Okay, so my next move is to install this bearing down here. Welcome back guys. So in this video we carry on with the diff repair. I hope you all guys are enjoying it thus far. Here we go. Okay, so I'm busy. I just machined this this pipe, which I'm going to use to press the bearing on. So I'm just going to touch this face here, and and then I'll use this to push the bearing. I'll show you how this will work. Okay, so the idea behind this thing is I obviously machined that there. This is the old one. So for the new one, I'll obviously I'll heat up this bearing, and I'll stick this over like that and i'll actually push the the bearing in using this tool okay so my next move is to install this bearing down here once again this must go all the way down here like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to heat up i'm going to heat up this old race make it nice and red hot and I'll put it back to back on there so the heat can transfer onto onto that bearing which will make that expand which will make this new one expand and will go easier on down there than just forcing it on because these are inter interference fits guys so I know a lot of you guys just would do would do that and then start smacking it down here you know you get away with it but the proper way is to try to expand this bearing to let it you know have proper proper seating and proper clearances. Okay, I'm gonna heat up and install. I actually think that this could be I actually think that this could be warm enough now okay so now I take the new bearing and I'll place this thing on it like that so the heat should be transferred being trans the heat should be transferred to the, the bottom bearing now. I'll give it a few minutes. Okay, so it's been on there for about a minute or two. Okay, so pinion bearing change time. Old one, new one. All done. All right. Next one. Okay, I'm going to do the installation of this outer race now in the diff casing. And just like that, she's in. When perfect in, I'm going to turn the diff around and do the, the bottom one now. Okay, so I turn the 
the diff over got it onto the stands my next job is to put that outer race in there it's all nice and clean inside so yeah let's put that that race in there and just like that guys she is in all right so with the all the races in now and you can see there the next job would be to to put this thing in and then start working the clearances out to make sure there's enough you know there's enough float on the races for the bearings to move freely so i'm just going to put like a, just a little layer of grease on you so that it doesn't you don't have that metal on metal type of feel and then i'm going to stick it in Okay, so I put it back on the ground and then I obviously inserted the, the outer race and I put the pulley on. I didn't put the seal in here yet, so I'm just busy pulling it, pulling it closer. I'm almost there, so I just put this thing in here and I'll start pulling it here. So it's actually quite tight already, just a matter of talking it now. She's in. But I don't want to like talk it because like I said the seal isn't in. So now I just need to feel what type of backlash there is on this bearing. And then the pinion side is sorted out. Actually like I said I'm going to just take this off again and put the seal in and then the pinion side will be sorted. Okay, so I nipped it all up, <clears throat> and if I feel this, if I feel this, the play here, you know, if I just like try to lift it up and down, there is almost, almost no movement here. If I spin it, she spins fine, I can hear the, I can hear the races of the bearings. So I'm going to put this, the dial gauges on now. And just see if there's any, you know, I just want to check the, the backlash between the bearings. Okay, so this is how I set the dial gauge up. You can see that it's going down to the pinion there. So I'm going to just check the backlash now by moving the pinion up and down and see if there's any movement. Like I said, before setting this thing up, it felt actually very good. There wasn't much movement, which is ideal. So I'm just going to check this out quickly. Okay, guys, so I never showed you because I couldn't really zoom into the dial gauge, but I took it all out already. The movement here is almost like, almost no movement. If I must say it in millimeters, it's probably like... 0 0.01 type of thing very little movement this is actually feeling very good there's no excessive movement no excessive play i can't move this thing around this one is done now so i'm going to change the crown wheel okay so she's in the vice and i'm going to loosen it
clean this thing up in preparation for the new the new ring gear okay so here we have the two crown wheels this is the old one the four five five to one ratio this is the new one the three nine to one ratio and here's the carrier it's all cleaned up now so I'm going to stick this onto this now then I'm going to put the bearings on all right let's do this okay so I'm going to stick this in just to guide this bolts something like that should be should be relatively close Okay, so I've got the, the new crown wheel onto the carrier. I'm going to start inserting the start inserting the bolts and torque it. I'm actually I actually think I'm going to put just a dab of of Loctite on here as well. Talk of 40 Newton meter. All right, so I'm ending this one here, guys. So I know there are some clips where when I assembled units and I never showed you that it's kind of awkward to hold the camera and work with one hand. Yes, I got a tripod, but you know, sometimes you need to zoom down into something and then you need. To have the camera in your hand and with me working alone it is a little bit awkward so please forgive me for that but i'm sure you get the jits of the assembly of the stuff so i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the notification bell don't forget to like subscribe share comment i'll catch you in the next one cheers for now